Now, back to the wave uh, equations. Let's talk about some examples that has to do with the wave equation. If you remember that the wave equation states that V is equal to F lambda or V is equal to lambda over T. Yeah, we'll have this too. Good. Now, we'll take the first question. It said, a wave has frequency of 100 hertz. So the frequency for this question one, we'll write it out, is 100 hertz. He said, and a wavelength of 40 centimeter. So the wavelength, lambda, is 40 centimeter. But funny enough, we all understand that length is measured, or the wavelength is measured in meter. And 40 centimeter is not a standard value for the measurement. It's a lower value. So we'll convert it to the standard value, which is 0 0.4 meter by dividing 40 by 100. That will give us 0 0.4 meter. Beautiful. Now, he said, what is the value? What is the velocity of the wave? Now, we are looking for velocity of the wave. We don't know it yet. That's a question mark. So which of the formula are we going to use? We have to use the first. So using V is equals to F over lambda. V is equals to 100 times 0 0.4 hertz. So if you multiply this, the first zero will make this move. That will become 10 times 4, which is equals to 40 meter per second. That is the value of the velocity. Now, this is simple. Normally, equation, questions that has to do with calculations in wave are generally simple. So you don't need to stress yourself. It's simple, straight to the point. And no matter how the question is coined, is simple. Now, take a look at this. The next question is, uh, he said again that question two, he talked about calculate the, we're done with this, he said calculate the period of a wave of wavelength. Oh, the wavelength of this one is 0 0.6 meter. So we don't need to convert because it's already in meters. And of a wave this is that our speed of this. It's a calculate the period. So we already know the speed. The speed is given as 300 meter per second. But they're asking us to find the period. We don't know the period. So the relationship between these three values is found in this equation. So we say using V is equals to 300. It's close to 0 0.6, or maybe you use lambda force over t. So we continue from here. That will give us 300 is equal to our lambda is 0 0.6, and what we are looking for is t. So by the time we cross multiply. The value we are having is 300t is equals to 0 0.6. So from here, it will give us something that looks like, if you divide this, so you have 300 here and 300 here. 300 will cancel 300. So what we are having is t is equals to 0 0.6 divided by 300. And funny enough, it's easy for us to calculate like this as math student. It's possible for us to say, okay, this is this value here will give us one. If you take it back, that will give us six times ten raised to the power minus one. And this one is one, two. That will give us three times ten raised to the power two. So funny enough, if 3 go here is 1, 3 here will be 2. So first of all, we have 2 times. So minus 1 is the power here. If this plus 2 climbs to the other side, it's going to become minus 2. So minus 1 minus the 2, that will become 10 raised to the power minus 3. That will be the value 
in seconds of the verb. Or you can say it's the same thing as if you want to take the zero, it's the same thing as 0 0.002 seconds. So that 0 0.02 means 1, 2, 3. So that's the value. So that is the value of the period in seconds. Now, this is beautiful. So I believe anywhere you meet such calculation, it's easy for you to solve. And I use V equals to F lambda, or you use V is equal to lambda over T for equation of uh, a wave, from a wave equation. Now that is that. Let's now talk about something in wave that is theory. Those thing that thing has to do with the properties, things that wave is known with. There are some things wave is known with. There are some properties that wave is known with. And one of those properties that wave is known with is that wave number one can be reflected. Two, wave can be refracted. The next other thing is that wave can be diffracted. And there's something again that I know very well that other things that wave can do. Wave can be polarized. Wave can be polarized. But first of all, let's talk about the basic properties of wave. And from there, we'll throw more light on further things that wave is known with. Now, properties of wave. Of wave. Uh, the first property is that one is a reflection. Wave can be reflected. Two is a refraction. Wave can be refracted. The third one is diffraction. Diffraction. Wave can be diffracted. Now, wave also can be polarized. But before that, let's consider this before we talk polarization differently. Now, the first one is reflection. How can wave be reflected? What's reflection? When a moving wave meets an obstacle, when it meets an obstacle, it is observed that it changes direction or is reflected backward or reflected to the left. Now, for example, now you have something like this. Maybe you have a body placed here and it generates wave. Here's the body and it generates wave. The wave is moving, it's moving and it's moving. Now, on the process of moving, there is an obstacle here. This is a reflector. It's an obstacle. So as the wave is moving, it's moving towards this direction. It's moving, and it's moving, and it's moving. As it gets here, something will happen to the wave. It will begin to change direction. And how is that happening? You start seeing the wave coming out. To start moving, to start moving, to start moving. So, this is the incident wave. So this wave we see is the incident wave. So this wave is the incident wave that you put into this body. But this one is the, this is the incident wave. And this one that you see coming out is the reflected wave. So when wave is incident on an obstacle, the obstacle reflects it. So as the wave is moving, the obstacle stops it. Then the direction of that. So this wave was moving in this direction. So when it hits an obstacle, it reflects back. So the thing is that one of the attitude that wave possess is that it can be reflected. So that's one of its characteristics, one of its properties. 
is that wave can be reflected. Whenever a wave is moving and it meets an obstacle, it tends to change its direction. And immediately it changes its direction, it has been reflected. Now, for example, if for example the, you have an obstacle too, and maybe the wave you're talking about is, is uh, a circular wave, as it's moving towards its body, so, so this is the incident. Before you know, it will start coming out as a reflected wave. To be reflecting, coming out, coming out, coming out. So this one is the reflect. So this is the incident and this is the reflected. So wave can basically be reflected. So the first thing you've learned now is that wave can be reflected. So one of the first property of wave is that it can be reflected. So the other thing is refraction. Wave can be refracted. How can wave be refracted? What is refraction? If you want to talk about refraction of wave, wave being refracted is another thing entirely. Refraction is when, when a wave changes its direction because it is moving from because it has moved from one less dense region into a more dense region or a most dense region into a less dense region. It has to be opposite side. So if for example you have a body, maybe what is maybe you have a pan, a big pan, very big pan, where you have water like a repo tank, and maybe water is coming. Wave is coming from this direction. And maybe inside this same place, you now put something like a glass here. Put something like a glass inside the pan. The whole pan is filled with water. Now you now put glass in one side of the pan. And you create a wave here with a disturbance. A wave produces a disturbance. So the wave will start moving. They will be moving. As it's moving, when it's getting here, when it gets to this place, and it gets here, something will happen to the wave. Because of this boundary, where this thing is, something will happen to the wave. You will just discover that the wave will change direction. <laughs> it will change direction. So that when it gets here again, its direction again will change. So, the truth is, this is the incident a, a wave. When it gets to this place, if you change slightly to bend a little inside this glass, the reason is because here is deeper, deeper, and here is less deep. So because of that, the direction will change. So anytime wave try to enter into a region that is either less dense or more dense, it will change its direction. Or anytime it moves from a deeper region into a less deep region, or from a less deep region into a deeper region, its direction will change slightly. It will bend a little. As it's moving, maybe something is moving, a wave is moving inside a pan, and you decide to drop a big plate inside. When you drop it inside that water, you observe that the direction of the wave will change, it will change slightly. That slight difference. That you see that slight curve that it comes is a phenomenon known as refraction. So wave can be refracted. Funny enough, this wave that is being refracted, it has something. This point where it changes its direction has something we call refractive index. If, for example, this place here is place A and this place here is place B, the refractive index of AB can be obtained. I'm oh, sorry, BA can be obtained. Can be obtained. So this A region is B region. So the refractive index of BA can become speed in speed in B. This is B and this is A. Speed in B in region B divided by speed 
in region A. So the speed in region B is something like this. It is F lambda B divided by F lambda A. Why is it F lambda? The reason is because V is equal to F lambda. So the speed is V. So the speed here is lambda F. F lambda, F lambda. So for B and for A. So because of that, the refractive index, BA, is going to become, since F is the same, frequency can never change. If, during the course of refraction, take note of this class. During the course of refraction, frequency can never change. So that is why you see I did not know by any of them, because they can change. The only thing that will change, that will be affected, is the wavelength. So as a body moving from one region to another and try to bend slightly, that bending is due to the fact that his wavelength has changed. So your theory questions can come in. During refraction, which of these will be affected? A, speed. B, frequency. C, wavelength. D, period. The only thing that is never affected is frequency. Frequency can never be affected. So you can have options as A, velocity, a speed, a velocity of the body, the speed of this, the frequency of that, the period. But the only thing that does not change during refraction is frequency. So frequency cancels. So the refractive index for this is going to become lambda in B over lambda in A. So you can have a formula. Always remember that the wavelength in B by wavelength, they will give you the refractive index. The word is called the refractive, refractive index. That's the word. Refractive index. So anytime you see the bola sign, it is the refractive index. B A. That's refractive index of B compared A. B with respect to A. That is, so the speed, B, speed, A, that's refractive index. Now, that is that we've talked about refraction when we slightly bend because it moves from one region of either high dense or less dense or more deep or less deep, it will bend. So that is refraction. So the next one is the guy they call diffraction. Diffraction is something else, totally something else. Now, You observe that when wave is made to pass through a certain uh, thin hole, maybe wave is moving like this as it's moving. Maybe there's an obstacle on the road. The obstacle has a spread. Maybe in between. This is the obstacle. These are the obstacles. So as the wave is coming, you know it will have to pass through this hole. It will have to pass through this hole. So when it passes through this way, it is observed that when it comes out of this place, it is spread out. It is spread out. So when it passes through this place, it is observed that it spreads out. So when it spreads out, that spreading that it spreads out is what we call diffraction. Now this diffraction, the smaller the smaller the gap the highest it spread so the spreading if the gap is high the spreading will be high so anytime wave passes through a gap and it tends to spread out. That spreading out is what we call diffraction. When wave motion, it depends. Even if the wave is a circular wave, it doesn't matter. Whether circular, whether rectangular wave, when wave passes through a gap or something like a holish gap, it will surely spread out. And that phenomenon is called diffraction. So when wave passes through that kind of gap, and they ask you, what has happened to the wave? You tell by saying, the wave passed through the gap and it was diffracted. So when they pass through the gap, they diffract. It is a property that all wave possesses. 
Okay, now from here you have diffraction, you have reflection, refraction. Now let's talk about something we call progressive and stationary wave. Progressive and stationary wave. Progressive and stationary wave. So stationary wave. So waves, there are waves that are stationary and there are waves that are progressive. When you say a wave is stationary, it shows that they can combine to be stationed at a point depending on their nodes and their antinode. I'll have a diagram for that. But generally, a progressive wave is a moving wave. A progressive wave is a traveling wave. So you can, any wave that moves generally is a traveling wave. And any wave that moves is said to be a progressive wave. Now, but for a stationary wave, you observe something that if two waves, maybe you have something like this, inside a voice cap, a wave is being projected it goes, it goes within, and another one goes within. What happens is that as they travel, they combine here. This is like a pipe. When they travel, they combine. This place where they combine, at this point here, they tend to become stationary at this point. That is, stay stationary at this point. So they become stationary at this point. This is a confined space. This travel with its own wavelength, this travel with its own wavelength. As they get to this place, they combine. At this point, we say that the wave at this point is stationary. But what about a situation where you also have that same wave? Where it travels, another travels, and they meet here. So this place where they meet here, we say this, this is wave one and this is wave two. When they combine here, where they combine, you say that they are stationary at that point. Good. Now, so it is called stationary wave. So in a situation where it progress, it progress, it emanates, it stops. So this place where they stop again, you see they are stationary at this point. So a wave can be progressive and be stationary. At this point, they are progressive. But when they get here, they become stationary. Where they combine, at that point, their resultant movement tends to be zero. Now, take a look at this. From there, we can draw out a nodal and an antinodal graph for them. Now, if you have this as your displacement, you have something like this. You observe that as your wave moves, you can have something like this. You can have something like this. You can have something like this. What you are having now is the x direction and this is the y, which is the maximum displacement. Now, what you get from here is that this place you see here is the antinode. And here is, is the node. Here is the node. And here is the antinode. So an antinode, an antinode is a is a point of maximum displacement. It's a region of maximum displacement. But a node is a region where there is no displacement. So in this, at this node, no movement. Everything is stationary. Total stationary. But here, this is its highest movement it can reach. So here there is a, is a region of maximum movement. Here is a region of maximum value of movement is zero. So here, at this point, this maximum movement is total zero at node. But at antinode, yes, it moves. But at node, no movement. 
So a region where there is maximum movement is the antinode. Where there is no movement is the node. Now, from here, we'll discover that from these two points, this is lambda over 4. So if this is lambda over 4, this is another no antinode, and this is a node. So this is lambda over 4. So automatically, if this is lambda over 4, so what it means is that from here to here is uh, lambda lambda over 2. So here is lambda over 4. So here will be lambda over 2. So if that is lambda over 2, if you add lambda over 4, lambda over 2 here, another region here will be lambda over 4. That's lambda over 2. So you have to move now before you can stop here and put something here. And what is that? Lambda over 2 is this point. point. So but from here to here is lambda over 4. So if you have lambda over 4, what you get as an LCM is 4. That will be 2 plus what you get here is 1. This is 2 lambda and this is lambda. That will be 3 lambda over 4. So from here to here is 3 lambda. So that is for here. So automatically, if you now extend it from here down to this place, you have a lambda. So the distance, this is a node. A node, node, node. But this anti node. So the distance between one and one anti node to another anti node is a lambda. A distance between an antinode, the distance between two successive antinodes, these two successive antinodes now, from here to here, is lambda over 2. So this is two successive antinodes. So between two nodes is lambda over 2. Between two antinodes. So, so let's take note of this class. Note this. Antinode, antinode is lambda over 2. Node, node is lambda over 2. Take note of this. So antinode, antinode is lambda over 2. Node, node is lambda over 2. But funny enough, after having that, you now observe that. What about you now want to consider node, antinode? So, so antinode, node is lambda over 4. So when you have When you have from here to here is one node, and from here to here is another node. So if you have node node in two places, so you get one lambda. So uh, from here, it makes it easy for you to understand the basic principles of stationary wave. So remember, node, the point of no movement. Antinode, that point of maximum movement. So the diff distance from a node to an antinode, a node to an antinode is lambda over 4. Node, node is lambda over 2. Antinode, antinode, lambda over 2. So with this, it's easy for you to draw out your calculations with respect to progressive and stationary waves. Now, let's still consider other things in stationary waves that is easy. Let's talk about stationary waves in the sense that stationary waves, even when sometimes they move, they combine. But what, there are some situations where they combine in such a way that they are either constructive or destructive. In that situation, we say that they combine, and that phenomenon itself is called interference. So note, take note of this. When, when two progressive waves combine, when two, 
to progressive waves combined. So that the so that the super super impose this each other then they are said to be in constructive interference now listen when two progressive waves combine together what happens to them is if they combine together and they tend to superimpose what it means is that that this diagram illustration if a wave is traveling this one is traveling this one is wave one another wave is traveling that is wave two when they combine together if they combine together you observe that when they combine they combine to form something like this they combine to form something like this now when they combine to form something we say that they have superimposed superimposed meaning they've been surmounted inside each other so they superimpose that is what it means this one is moving at its own pace so by the time they combine together they superimpose it's just as if you are having a, it happens majorly in sound waves where you have superimposition of waves even in water waves you have superimpositions of waves now a wave is traveling at its own progressive pace and another wave is traveling if they travel and they not meet at a certain point that was they meet each other okay for example you are having a closed system where you have something of this closed system you have a wave traveling this one is moving in this direction and another wave is coming this is his own direction this one is now moving in the opposite direction if these two waves are moving inside a confined space and they now combine together they will do something they will superimpose they will superimpose and that kind of wave is called construct they are said to be constructive interference so then constructive interference now but in a situation where they combine where the peak of one is on the trough of the other the peak of one coincide with the trough of the other by the time that kind of wave combine together they don't just superimpose they will superimpose and after some time they will disappear meaning they will cease to exist and immediately they dis disappear we no longer call that constructive interference we call that destructive interference so when two progressive waves meet each other and try to combine together to become superimposed we call it constructive interference but when the two progressive waves whose peak and trough tends to combine together to superimpose and after some time they cease to exist or disappear we say that they are in destructive interference so constructive interference destructive interference in between we now bring out another theorem that is called the principles of beats
Now, let's talk about beats in details. So when you talk about beats, beats are just two, you majorly find beats in principles of sounds. Beats basically are just waves of two, two different frequencies. Now, if you are in a party and they're playing music, you observe something, you hear sounds like, you'll be hearing high sound, low sound, high sound, maybe they're playing in music. Sometimes you hear the tone is high, sometimes the tone is low. That variation in tone, that variation in loudness, it goes and it comes down. That variation is due to the principle of beat. So, that variation is what makes the music that variation gives the music its own, there's a time uniqueness. There's a time when they play music, it is, you hear, the musicians sound louder. Sometimes it slows it down. The reason is because of the principle of beat. So that time when it's high, it's low. At, when it's high, it's at a high frequency. Then when it's low, it's at a low frequency. So that variation of loudness, Beats, that variation of loudness is what we call beats, where frequency 1 is greater than frequency 2. So therefore, beats is equals to F1 minus F2. So that's the formula of this one. So, and which can be related to F1 minus F2 is equals to 1 over T. That's also beats. So beats itself is the variation in loudness between two frequencies where one is greater than the other. That's the definition of beats. So what is the use of this beat? Beat is useful. When you want to tune your uh, musical instrument, you use the principle of beats, this formula, to tune it so that it will fall in line with exactly what you want. That's the main application of the principle of beat. So remember, beat is the variation in loudness of frequencies where one frequency is slightly greater than the other, thereby resulting in beat to so be F1 minus F2. Good.